I win 25% of my games because my pawns are better, period. You want an edge in your games? Pawn structure. What exactly does that mean? What are the weaknesses to exploit? Where do your pieces belong? And how can your pawns tell you how to win the game? We're also going to discuss the most important concept for beginners to know related to pawns. This is a seemingly limitless topic, but we're going to break it down, starting with weak squares. This square is weak. Why is it weak? Because there's no pawns that black has to defend it and no pawns that it could move forward to kick it out. Therefore, it's completely undefended. So what can I do here? I can just place my knight there and it is unassailable other than by another piece. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. It goes a little bit deeper. If we go back just one move, I can trade off my bishop to create this condition of that weak pawn. Usually a bishop is stronger than a knight, but if you can create a weak square, create this f5 weakness to land my knight, that's going to be that's going to be great for me. This is a permanent asset, especially as I'm menacing over on these checking squares or even on this checkmating square. So the game continues over and as we can see, I'm not even worried about giving up that pawn because I'm going to land my queen over here. I'm rerouting my knight up to here. I already have my other knight up here and I'm going after a big attack due largely to this weak square created by the pawn structure. And so my other knight comes in, it's attacking this f6 square so the rook defends it. Though the computer says I should just take here, I'm so happy with my position. I'm so happy with this knight. I don't even feel like it. I want to additionally build up more pressure on the king. And so he does capture right there, and I trade off this knight for the bishop. The knights are typically better than the bishop, but now that black's only going to have his dark bishop, and he has his pawns here on dark squares, what does that mean? It means he doesn't have any control of the light squares. We've already mentioned that this square here on f 5s weak, but now that this knight is being taken, this d5 square is also going to be very weak. I put my rook here on the open file. I move my knight back. I'm preventing any trades here on d1. I wouldn't want to allow this to happen and force a rook trade. Um, the more pieces off the board, the harder it is you are to win, especially when you're pushing for a win. So I prevent that. I land my knight here in the center on this other weak square. Like I said, there's no way that this is ever going to be kicked out of the game. Similarly, my queen here on f5 is also very, very strong due to the weaknesses in black structure. I move my rook here forward, and now my position's so strong, I'm just slightly moving over. I'm going to collect on these pawns. I'm eventually going to, you know, you know, I'm going to push this pawn maybe and create a queen if it gets all the way to there. We'll see what happens. Black tries to get some counterattack. I do collect that pawn. I move my king over, and actually right here, I'm threatening checkmate if black doesn't do anything. Can you see the checkmate? Let's just say that black decides to capture here on a2. Well, let's put it on the board here, and it would be here. So he has to block. You capture, capture, and this right here is checkmate. So he can't do that. What does he do instead? He moves his king over. He gives up that, and now I'm collecting. He, he is pinned right here. I'm going to win that bishop. He tries to counterattack my rook, remove the escape square from the bishop, and the game is just over. I can capture right here. I'm up too much material, and my opponent resigns. So that's our first major theme of pawn structure. Your pawn structure determines what the weak squares are. So going back to this position right here, trading off that bishop, not only is this square weak because no pawns can attack this square, this square is also weak because no pawns can attack it. In addition to no pawns being able to attack it, my pawn is defending both of those squares, really locking it in. The next big thing to keep in mind is peace trades can be determined based on those weak squares. So we know that this square is weak. We know that this square is weak. Once I get rid of the last piece that can land here on d5, that makes this knight that much more valuable. Pawns can also tell you where are you supposed to attack. I want to look at an example right here 
into King's Indian defense. This is an improved version for me because White has played C3. We'll see here in a minute why I say that's an improved version. So game continues. I strike back in the center and then this center gets locked here. I move over and White is shooting over at B4. So in this center configuration, the black pawns are lining up and imagine that they're shooting an arrow over this way. That's a slight indication that's where you're supposed to attack. White similarly has these and his arrow is shooting over here. So it's indicating that generally you're gonna to wanna to attack where your pawns are aiming. And so that's why I say that this C3 move is an improved version for me because in a lot of lines of the Kings of Indian, that pawn's already gonna be here on C4. And so White's queenside attack's gonna land just a little bit faster. But let's see how it progresses. I strike over here, trying to undermine that queenside attack. And then also here is if, let's just say that this trades, this is a great way to activate my rook without ever having to move it. Instead of that, he pushes forward. That's a mistake because it's a weakening move. So right now he's got all of his pawns here on light squares. That's gonna become more important here. So I push my knight back so that I can play f5, f4. That's a common idea in the King's Indian since I'm going after that king-sided attack. That's where my pawns are showing me I should go. That's what I'm gonna to try to do. And you might be wondering, usually you don't wanna move your pawns right in front of your king like this f5 move, but with all of these pawns kind of locked in the center, and particularly with this pawn right here on d5, white doesn't have any ability to actually attack my king because his own pawn is in the way. And so he moves over and I push f4. This is always gonna be a great idea in the King's Indian because I'm adding to my pawn chain and I'm adding this locked center right here. I'm infiltrating these squares and it's just gonna be and it's even further locking the center of the board, making my king safer. And so continues here, he's forced to trade off, otherwise he was gonna lose his bishop. And now I push b6. So why am I pushing b6? Because I want to completely lock his ability to play c4. Since I'm restricting his ability to push his own pawns and I'm reserving my ability to push my pawns over here when convenient, that's gonna be an advantage for me. So. He castles, which is a little bit ambitious with all my attack that's clearly on its way over here. And now my king starts going on a little jaunt, right? What I do want to do because of these pawns is I'm going to be pushing and be pushing. Let's act like I did that on purpose. And before I do that, I'm going to get my rooks over here and I want to get my king safe. And so since this center is locked, I have the time to start, you know, making sure everything's kind of perfectly set before I make these pushes over. And right here, actually, I am missing some counterplay from White. So during the game, this didn't come up, but White has the ability here to really take control of the game before, you know, all the fun happens. So I'll give you just a second here to figure out, you know, what is it that you can do? It's kind of a hard move to find, which is why I didn't see it, um, probably why my opponent didn't see it either. There's two choices, actually. The first one is knight captures on a5, b captures, and now c5. So it's just, okay, I'm gonna break through. There's no one over here to defend your king, and now with this clearance sacrifice, giving up my knight for a pawn, you're gonna be in trouble. You've got no defenders. And the other idea is very similar. It's C4 here, here, here. Um, these pawns are super weak, so let's bring some more attackers to the party and let's punish Black for getting a little bit too confident. But instead of all of that, luckily for me, my opponent just continues forward and I break through right here. And it's just a matter of fully bringing in the attack. Um, it looks kind of scary with the queen up here, but it's, I'm a little bit quicker and this here is checkmate. So in addition to knowing what the weak squares are, 
knowing what pieces to trade. The pawn structure also tells you, hey, where am I supposed to attack? And all of that same stuff works in reverse too. So, hey, where are my weak squares? Where can my opponent attack me? What trades might my opponent want to do? All that determined by the pawn structure. I mentioned at the beginning, I was going to hit the most important concept for beginners to understand related to pawns. And this is a fun example of it. So I'm playing black right here and I push my pawn here to b4 attacking white's knight. He counter attacks my bishop. And what do I do? I take, 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 and take. And at the end of this line, what I have is I actually have a very far advanced pawn that is not able to be immediately captured. And, and I want an extra pawn, which is also great too. And the most important thing for beginners in particular to understand is space in chess so space is when you're in your opponent's half of the board and you're attacking his stuff making him respond and particularly when it comes to pawns it's even more critical because because if you get your pawn all the way to the end of the board you get another queen and if you have an extra queen um chances are you're going to be able to convert that to a win and so let's see how this one plays out with my extra space i'm pushing my pawns even farther forward i want to get even more space and more advantage and we have the same trade bishop for knight of um, uh counter attack coolness my, my opponent he he likes playing some really really fun games here so you can see here white's getting a ton of pressure i start to lose my way a little bit i give up that advanced pawn which was my largest advantage um i still right now have an outside pass pawn so an outside pass pawn is more valuable than an inside passed pawn because it's harder for my opponent's king to get over here to defend it versus my king's much closer to his passed pawn so i go i attack his pawn i'm trying to pile up on it and win it i am able to do that he trades off queens and so now i've got two pawns versus his one but i just realized part way through this recording this time scramble that i got in so i added the clock so you could sweat it along with me Let's see if I'm able to convert this. No increment, 36 seconds left. And let's just click through the moves really quick as I try to, as quickly as possible, pre-moving as much as possible, get my way to a victory. And you can see here, I've got an advantage on the clock. 0.2 seconds left. And able to make it happen. For those who tuned in last week, I put backwards pawns as the third most important pawn concept to understand for both beginners and advanced players. For advanced players, this concept of pawn structure, I have that at the two most important thing to really understand versus beginners. Number one, I have as space with pawns and really putting it to your opponent. The reason those are different, I didn't really understand pawn structure until I was really 1500 elo and so you could get quite a long way with just hey let's just go ahead and attack let's push space let's put it to my opponents so let's make him make a mistake for advanced players i've got pawn space at the fifth most important concept because there's so many other ways to take advantage of your opponent and other ways to approach the game other than just going for space that you'll be able to explore for beginners in structure i have that as a fourth most important concept so knowing what those weak squares are knowing where to put your pieces knowing what trades to make please subscribe tune in next week where i fill out the rest of the list with the rest of the concepts have a great day guys